In our last video, we were analyzing this circuit here, and thus far we had determined what current I1 is equal to. That is plus 4 volts, mesh current I1. Now we want to quickly determine mesh current I2, mesh current I3, and then the amount of current that is flowing through these, di these um, six different resistors here. So, Let's go back to where we left off, which was right here. Try to get things into better focus. Okay, these are the three mesh currents that we obtained, which we wrote, we wrote like this, so we could have columns of I1s and I2s and I3s. Then with these column numbers, we made a 3 by 3 determinant and we determine the numerical value of it. Now, let's continue then and use this information to solve for I2. And it's the same procedure. Again, we have these three columns of numbers. Now, when we want to determine current I2, we replace this column of numbers with this column of numbers to make ourselves a 3 by 3 determinant. So we have 9 minus 4 minus 2. And then here we have 20, 0, 0. Try to keep things in focus. And then we have minus 2, minus 5, and plus 8. Divide this by 315, and that's I2. So let's see what we have. Here, it's going to be 9 times this subdeterminant, and we've got these two zeros again, which makes that 0. 8 times 0. And then we have minus 5 times 0. So we have 20 times 0. Minus the next number. No, that's 9 times 0. See, when you're going through these problems, it's very easy to somewhere mess yourself up with a silly mistake. So don't do what I just did. Take your time and do it correctly. Minus the next number, which is 20. And now we have this submatrix, or subdeterminant. Cover up the row, cover up the column. Negative 4, negative 2, minus 5, 8. Okay, and minus 2 times this 2 by 2 determinant, cover up the column, cover up the row. Does that come out okay? Yes. And again, we have these two zeros, so we have 0 minus 0. So this is minus 2 times 0. So this is 0. This is 0. And remember now, when you're working your way across, it's 9 times the subdeterminant minus this number times the subdeterminant, and then that's plus or minus whatever. It's this number times the 2 by 2 subdeterminant. OK, and here we have minus 32 minus 10. So that's minus 32 plus minus 10. So this has a value of minus 42. So we have I2. Keep things in focus. I2 equals minus 42 times minus 20. That will be plus 84 with a 0. 
840 divided by 315. Two minuses makes this a plus. And let's see, put it on the calculator, and I think this comes out to be pretty close to plus 2.67 amps. So there is current I2. I2 is plus 2.67 amps. And only one more to go. Let's quickly determine I3. Now for I3, same setup basically, except that here, it is the I3 column that gets replaced with this. So let's do that. And I2 stays the same. So we have minus 4 plus 11 minus 5. And then 20, 0, 0. Divided by the same denominator. 315. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, here we're going to have 9 times 11 0 or 11 minus 5 0 0 that's 0 so we have 9 times 0 minus negative 4 that makes it plus 4 and let's see what we have here cover up the row cover up the column and again We've got this double zero here, so we have zero minus zero, so that's four times zero. And then we have plus twenty. Now let's see what we have. Cover up the column and cover up the row. Minus four minus 2, 11 minus 5. Okay, that's 0, that is 0. Here we have 20 minus negative 22, so we have 20 minus negative 22, that's 20 plus 22, that is equal to 42. So we have I3 equals plus 20 times 42, um, 840 again, divided by 315, and we just did that, that's plus 2.67 amps. So I3 is also plus 2.67 amps. So there is our three mesh currents. Now let's just quickly go back to our original circuit. This is 4 amps. I2 is 2.67. And this is 2.67 amps. So clearly, let's just make some room. Clearly the amount of current going through this resistor is 0 because we have I2 minus I3 and going through here 2.67, going through here 2.67, and then going through here would be 4 amps, 
And then for here we have, for this resistor, we have 4 amps minus 2.67 amps. That would be 1.33 amps of current going through here. And same thing for here. 4 amps going here, 2.67 amps going there. So we would have 1.33 amps of current in this direction going through that resistor and in this direction, same magnitude, 1.33 in that direction through that resistor. So that's it. That's the complete circuit. Um, again, this is now our uh, last example here where we're dealing only with voltage sources in the circuit. Now we're going to con consider what happens if you have voltage sources and current sources. So come back, join us for those videos, and let's see if we can solve some more problems.